I know some of you will want a two minute summary of the great arc of communications theory development over the last 60 odd years. So here we go. Uh, serious academic attention was given by two different groups of scholars to communication uh, simultaneously. First of all, in the pre-war era, to some degree, particularly in the 1930s, by a group of uh, more critical scholars, intellectuals, primarily German or influenced by developments in Germany with the rise of Nazism. And uh, in the United States, with the rise of mass communications, particularly advertising, corporate communications as we understand it today. After World War II, uh, both of those skills of thought continued to flourish, and in the United States primarily, the scholars that led the critical school, often referred to as the Frankfurt School, many of them had actually, to escape the Nazis, had relocated to American universities and found a ready audience, of course, amongst American scholars, but also were connected to, to developments back in post-war uh, Europe. So they continued to focus, uh, and very importantly, on the role of communications technology in legitimating totalitarian, authoritarian regimes, mass mobilization for the horrible ends that Nazi Germany uh, used in the lead up to and during World War II. At the same time in the United States, in the early post-war era, there was, with the rise of mass consumerism, the increasing professionalization of advertising, marketing, corporate communications, and of course political communications, because what was done in the private sector was carried over to politics and vice versa. So there was a lot of work being done by generally more liberal, sometimes optimistic uh, scholars, in, imbued in the American political and corporate contexts, they were very much focused on basic theories that looked at the sender, the receiver, the message and the channel of communications, who was trying to communicate what to whom and through what means, and there were several approaches to doing that. Both of those skills were sort of optimistic in, in that if they they believed that if the communications technologies could be turned to right ends rather than wrong ends, then the world could be a better place. And of course, from a corporate perspective, uh, the better place was where the companies were profitable and flourishing. Uh, there was a backlash, ultimately, from various perspectives to that. Um, very often it was emphasised that the uh, scholars gave insufficient attention to how the recipients of a message, the receivers of a message, found their own meaning. And so there was an increasingly nuanced shift within those schools of thought. Very significantly out of Europe, a major development from the 1960s, and particularly the 70s and into the 1980s, is the rise of postmodernism, very much associated with French intellectuals. And part of this intellectual shift is really about a shift from grand stories and the focus on mass communications to more micro-level communications, local cultures, subcultures, for example, but also how various communities and individuals viewed at this micro level made sense of mass communications. And it really emphasized in a, in often a quite challenging theoretical way, how people make sense of the symbols, the, uh, the, the content of communication to create entirely new subcultures or their own particular perspectives on this and emphasised that there was often a radical subverting of the intent of state or corporate communications. And this postmodernist school also picked up on the significant technological developments in communication, that in fact uh, people very much were experiencing the world through mass communications, and that a lot of what they thought about the world, the reality as they knew it, was in fact a created reality. So it was a virtual reality or a hyper-reality that existed primarily through the medium of communications. That we, own, we know our own micro-worlds very well, but 
the larger world we only know through representations, media representations of the world. And so some of the French scholars said that this is inevitable that uh, people will experience virtual representations of the world and this will become reality for them. Reality is what you think it is in some sense. Now this con disconcerted some of the original critical scholars associated with the Frankfurt School because they saw it as giving up on the political objective of using communications tools to make the world a better place. Uh, the positive element for us and, and very significant implication for communications practice is that the postmodernists were really onto something. The recognition that high culture, which tended to be the concern of academics, is only a small part of culture at large, that uh, a whole range of, of subcultures and of pop culture, which is commercial, but also very much uh, played with, manipulated by the audiences of pop culture entrepreneurs, that these cultural developments were equally as significant as elite culture. And postmodernists also understood another fundamental thing, that this process of, in a sense, co-creation of meaning and often subversive creation of meaning had very significant implications with the rapid change in communication technologies. So, of course, we can, we can take many lessons from postmodernism and apply to, apply to this world of ubiquitous social media, of constantly connected audiences, of consumer-created content, and then how audiences critically engage with them. So there'll be a lot more to talk about in the course, and so much of what I'm, I'm doing in terms of focusing on how audiences use digital communications, for example, goes to uh, the heart of this postmodernist corrective. Just in conclusion, I would say that a lot of postmodernist theory is challenging to read, some would say impenetrable in terms of its theoretical language that it uses. So there are plenty of people who love to hate postmodernism. Uh, the uh, final observation to draw is that I think there is a valid criticism that uh, postmodernism is relativizing that it doesn't make normative judgments in the end about how mass communications and micro-level communications and micro-level interactions to mass communications technologies uh, have political content, have huge implications for the way we make sense of our world and the way we judge the world. So those Frankfurt School scholars who were so traumatized by the experience of Nazi Germany still are an, inva uh, an invaluable corrective to an optimistic notion that communications will always be used for better ends. And I think those of you who may have been surprised and dismayed by the previous US presidential election that brought Donald Trump to power would understand that, of course, the power of social media can work in a whole range of ways that don't necessarily bring optimism to uh, politics in general. And I know that was a couple more than two minutes. Bear with me. It is 60 years and a lot of theory. Thank you.